the world's number one sports and recreation podcast, GP, and I'm I'm very upset with myself because me and Truth talked a couple weeks ago. I'm like, yo, you're hot right now. I got to get you in for an interview right now. And I waited, and I sl- it slipped my mind, and then he's the hottest thing smoking. I'm driving the other day. I turn on Busted Open, and I'm like, damn it. They got our truth before I did, but here he is, <laughs> the true forever 24-7 champion, our truth What's good, truth Man, bro, I'm just having fun, bro. What? You are, well, we talked at the uh, MSG House show, and in that moment, your feeling was, I hope I just get to keep going with this thing. Um, have, yes. you been, have you been happy with how things have been going since we had that conversation? Man, happy ain't even though it's an understatement. I've been uh, ecstatic about it, man. I'm um again, man, it's not even work to me. I'm I'm having fun, man. Um we we all know I've been gone for like a year and some change, man. So uh other than just being ready to come back and get down to business, man, like I walked into this, man. I'm just I'm I'm enjoying it, soaking it in. It's it's uh it's been a pleasure for everyone to watch and you know, I'm, I joked, actually, I didn't joke. The, 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 at Survivor Series, obviously that day now will forever be remembered as the day CM Punk came back to the WWE. But it was also the day, it was also the day that Ron Killings came back to the WWE. After a long time off, R-Truth came back and I made the joke afterwards that when people, I was like, yo, everyone's asking about how everyone feels about punk coming back. I was like, in reality, you want to know who everyone was lit up in the locker room to see come back. It was our truth. (laughs) (laughs) And and I meant that. I mean, you, you know, yes, everyone, you, you saw all the smiles and hugs and everyone was just thrilled to see you back. Um, But man, I didn't know till I saw you that day, what a physical journey you had been on to get back um people don't really know the extent of your injury bro like was there a period when you thought you might not ever be doing this again yes there was a period man um i mean i had a hole in my knee a hole i had uh five different bacteria uh that caused infection uh uh, along with mercer staff and they cousins and kin folks you know what i'm saying Wait, um, and this happened, this started though, it started off as a routine injury of sorts, like an in-ring regular injury? Started off as a routine quad tear. Okay. Um, as a matter of fact, I tore my bottom quad and they went in and I guess it could have happened during surgery. Um, but I went to get the stitches out and as we found out that the bacteria, the infection was eating from the inside out. So that's where the hole, the hole came from. And I just remember the doctor never would give me a high five. And that was like, you know what I'm saying? He was like, okay, uh, get this. He said, nah. He said, well, we got to get this under control. If we can't get this under control, we might have to think of uh, other options. And maybe so, two, three so weeks later, surgery, he kept saying. You're ready, you're ready for the celebratory high five, like, hey, surgery's done. We're good. And yes. he's like, well, let's not celebrate quite yet? Yes, definitely. Oh, no. He, he was straight straight shooting with me. Uh, no, we, you, you're in the woods big time, like. We have to get this under control. Like it wouldn't heal. It would not heal. So then I had to go three months. I had to have a wound vac. I don't know if you ever heard of that before. It doesn't sound I never heard of it. Okay. Yeah, I had to. Well, it's, it's some, it was a vac that was on my knee that was sucking the, um, that kept sucking. I don't know if that's PG. It kept, uh, it kept sucking the, the old blood up okay. and putting the new blood and all that stuff like I had to wear that for six weeks, and uh, along with the pick line. I don't know if you ever heard of that before. Yes, pick line. That's what, I know. That took a two. Yes, so I had to have that man for eight weeks. I uh, did that, and once all that was over with, the stitches started coming out on their own. So I had stitches coming through my body, through my knee, out by itself. So my body wasn't agreeing to them. So I had to go back rejected. into surgery for a third time. Yes, third surgery, and the infection was still there. So I had to get another pick line as well. So, man, it was just a, a straight, a good four four months, five months of just trying to take care of the infection, slow it down, stop it, not go mentally crazy because he, there was a chance, he said, the uh, other option was amputation. You know what I'm saying? So to go from 
doing the 24 seven stuff, running around, doing things with my kids to, you know what I'm saying? Uh, NXT, uh, me and Grayson Waller tearing it down, doing things about it to like stopping and then getting told this. It was a big reality check, man. It was a, um, pump the brakes moment. Yeah. I mean, how do you even cope with, like, how do you mentally stay calm when the doctor's like, yeah, worst case scenario, we'd be talking about an amputation. Like, how do you even keep yourself level in that spot? I think just the initial shock of um, of reality keeps you calm because it's almost surreal to you. It's almost like, wow. And, and my mind is replaying everything that I've done in my career, my years, my life, my from being on stage rapping to in the ring to training, like anything and everything I've done to that point was like replayed in my mind. So I think just being humble, man, all, all these years kept me calm. Um, having faith um, kept me calm. Uh, having my family around kept me calm. I was getting calls from different people, man, uh, kept me calm. And just me knowing, okay, it'd be a big adjustment, big change, but life has to go on. I still have to, you know what I'm saying? It's just a lot of things I had to like juggle, deal with, accept, swallow, and keep it moving. At any point during this, did our truth actually get out of shape at all? Oh no. Oh no. Well, I will say uh, I did get down to like 180 pounds. Like it was because of the. What, what's I, I was taking. What's your working? What's your shoot weight? My shoot weight is like my shoot weight without working out. No, like with, like with working out, but your actual weight. Right now, I'm at 218. 218, and you were down to 180. Yes, and that's from taking the uh, antibiotics. I had, um, oh my gosh, man, I wish I had my other phone I would show you. I was taking like four different kinds of antibiotics. And when they would bring the boxes to my house, the people would always say, wow, they're giving you the big guns. Like, I'm like, huh? Like, it's like yes, these... Why did, five the, why, grand did, a week. Why, did, why did the people who said that have to be generic nerdy white guy voice? Why why was it why why was it those guys who said that? That's who brought it to me. <laughs> <laughs> the out the dick, and, and that's what it sounds like. <laughs> well, they, if it was somebody else, I'm like, dog, bro, they got you on the on the high power stuff, dog. <laughs> then you would have known, right? <laughs> oh, I, if I didn't say it. Oh, amigo, they got you on the young guapo <laughs> stuff. Man. See, you, you got you, got, you feel me, picture. right? Yeah, you're painting the picture. You're painting the picture. All right. So they, so they said, oh, you're on the, the high, the, the big stuff. I pounced the other, but I'm like, really? And like, uh, yeah, then the nurse, they was taking blood from me every week, Rosenberg. Peter, mm. every week I had to give blood to where like, um, one time she threw a tube away. She like, um, and it was going through my pick line. And it was like, the tube was pretty long, but I'm like, man, I'm I'm losing weight here, and you're just throwing my blood away. Like you know, she was like, "This one's no good. Don't worry about it," and just got we, rid of it. No, it was good. We just wanted to make sure the pig line was uh, blood could flow through. Now we're gonna really take some blood. I'm like, "Whoa, you can't use the tube you just threw away." Like she, you know, we're gonna keep that. But they had to do that so they can uh, keep up with how much bacteria was leaving or staying in, or which bacteria was still left. So, um, and they were telling me the antibodies will make you lose weight. And they were they were constant. Are you okay? You, you sure? You are not feeling anything? You you you're, they were constantly asking me that, man. So it was like um, it was a road, man. It was a road. And at some point, you told me the big uh, turning point for you was when you they they were like, oh, you can actually start working out again. So the, the, the once you were able to start working out, then you got back on your path. Yes, I got back on it, man. Um, I actually went to uh. Now, I forgot to tell you this. I was administering the uh, antibiotics to myself. They gave wow. me an extension, and I was able to um, hook it up and just extend it to myself. And I remember driving to um, Virginia to watch my son play basketball with my pick line and everything and having to do it in the car. You know what I'm saying? Oh, wow. And uh, I'm like, wow, so I don't nobody see me doing it. I'm like, oh, wow, he's doing drugs over there. He's doing something in the car with his arm. But it's like... The same nerdy white guys back noticing, looking through the window. Well, these are, that's who was looking through the window. Yeah. So, <laughs> so man, just um, just going through all of that, man, and like knowing, like, okay, uh, I'm working out now. 
just that I'm telling you, Peter, just being able to work out brought so much life to me. I had no problem doing that drive to Virginia. I had no problem. I would do that because it brought that's I'm normally that's my routine. I've been Your programmed. Home, right. You've been doing yes, that. Yes, man. Yes. And I um, started getting my weight back. Started like um never lost my appetite. It was just how strong the uh, the antibiotics was. It was just almost like um then the mind, uh mental health is, is a serious thing. It was it was my mind like uh winning, um, making me feel like okay, it's pretty much over. It's pretty much you know what I'm saying like it, it was a it was a struggle, man. Just just like but once that allowance of me being able to work out came back, what everything is, what else is a, vanished. What does a typical R Truth workout look like? How long are you in the gym for? How do you break it up between lifting, cardio? What's 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 a truth workout look like? Um I'm in the gym an hour and a half. Um, stretching, uh, I do cardio first. I do 20, 25 minutes of cardio every day. What's your cardio? Even if I don't hit the 20, 25 minutes. On the, on just Lip running? Running. Okay. What number, um, what, what number are you running on? 32. 32? I'm not, yeah, I'm not speed racing. No, 32. I'm not running a 40. No, I'm talking about, I'm talking about, you know, if it has the thing on the button where you can choose your speed, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 32. No, that, that would mean you're running 32 miles an hour, I think. On no, it's not. What kind of machine you on? <laughs> the, ones that I've, the ones that I'm on, like, seven is a seven is a pretty good jog. Like Seven doesn't is mean fast. seven miles an hour. You sure? I'm you, positive. No, if you went on 32 on the machine I have, it would be like a cartoon. You would be flying off the bat. You know what I'm saying? No way, Peter. No, no. You can't you know run what? 32. I'm going to take a picture and a video of it, and I'm going to send it to you. But you're not dead sprinting, you're saying? No. It's like a, it's like an up-tempo jog. Oh, hold on. He's, he's about to show us right now. He's standing up, and he's showing us the motion. All right, that's about the speed. Just like that? Just like... Oh, <laughs> This is this is the speed that you jog at. All right, yeah. On my machine, I would say that's about a... um. Yeah, about a seven and a half or an eight. You're saying it's a 32. It's a 32. <laughs> right, what kind of machine you, you using, Peter? Right, listen, it's old. The machines in my building are old. Look, you see I'm in bad shape. <laughs> <laughs> you now, must be on some skis or something. <laughs> now, okay, so what else? So you do 25 minutes of cardio. and then 25 you, and minutes of cardio, and that's done. Then I'm doing lifting weights. Um... And I don't do like uh, most people. Like, uh, hey, bro, what are you working today? You working back? Are oh, you doing legs today? Are you doing chest or what? <laughs> Wait, so the I black guy, like... the black guy asked about the back. White guy asked about the legs. Okay, keep going. <laughs> I'm just keeping track of who's at the gym. <laughs> oh, this is good, and because we know each other too. So, but check it out. So there's just so many parts of the body, man. Like. If I'm doing bench, there's a part of my back I'm doing. I'm doing shoulder raise at the same time. Then I'll go do a uh, leg extension. The next okay. day I come in, I'll do incline. You know, that's going, the, level, the chest got three levels. I'll do incline. Then I'll probably do um, cable pulls. Okay. And I'll do abs. And then I'll do hammies workout. Wednesday, I'll do decline, the lower parts of the chest. I'll finish decline, and I'll go do tricep push um, push downs, and I'll go do calf raises, and a lot of hammer strength. Mm. The uh, Thursday, I'll come back and repeat everything over again. And are you in seven days a week, or you take you take a day or two on the weekend? I take one day off. I take like Saturday or Sunday off, but I still go in and do cardio. And what's your what's your eating regimen like? Oh, that's crazy, man. Um, I don't eat breakfast. A lot of people are shocked at that. No breakfast for you? I, I've never eaten breakfast. But, like, wake up early in the morning and fix breakfast with, like, a cereal and eggs and grits. I don't eat that. that like that. And my first meal would be around 2, 3 p.m. Okay, and my, what is that meal usually? Either chicken, fish, or beef. Okay, and and, and a grain or no grain? A gram of what? A grain. Like you have rice? Oh, you have any carbs or no? Uh, 
I try to eat the carb like later on. I'll use the if I eat the bun, that is my carb. Okay. Um, and then, but like, and then, and then night, dinner, you, you have snack too or just dinner? If I snack, I'm snacking on nuts. <laughs> P- hey, I don't know if that was PG. I was talking about. <laughs> All right. Peanuts. Just snack peanuts. On nuts and then, and then <laughs> for dinner. Oh, <laughs> uh, for dinner, I'll eat some. Uh, I love my Japanese food, man. So uh, a lot of sushi. Matter of fact, that's what the doctor told me to eat to um to heal my wound quicker. Really? They know that protein helps you heal double time. But um salmon, uh, or the chicken at nighttime. A lot of it. Um, well listen, man, we are so glad that you are all right, man. That when you told me that story, I just assumed at a certain point, like you got better and then you know, they didn't have anything and you were taking your time. I, I did not realize, and I don't think anyone realized how serious a health thing you were dealing with, bro. So fighting, <clears throat> fight for my life over here, for my limbs. You know what I'm saying? Like it was, it was no joke. It was serious dog. And uh, a lot of people didn't have no clue of how the, the extent of the uh, injury was. They just thought maybe, Oh, you just out. You just out. No, I, was out and not being able to bend my leg for four months. Like imagine not bending your leg at all because when they cleaned it out, they had to cut around the hole and they had to pull my skin together to stitch it. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So he didn't want me to bend in rehab to pop the stitches, you know what I'm saying? The skin or whatever. He had another, he's had nothing else to grab. We have to start grafting skin to try, you know what I'm saying? So, so imagine that. And then coming back after rehab, I mean, going to rehab, I mean, it was like, a little bit more stiffer than normal because I didn't, I wasn't able to work at all, but I was just, I was ready to come back, Peter. I was ready to come back and, and now you're back and now you're back and you're like, uh, in such a big spot with the judgment day, um, and the Miz and yes, man, it's, it's just, it's, it's, it's awesome to see, man. And at this point, I'm not even surprised to see that you consistently find your way back. Let me ask you this. Um, is there anything else left that you would like really want to do besides continue to be entertaining and be our truth? Um, is there anything sort of left to check off for our truth? Um, not really, man. I kind of like our truth just takes it as it come, man. And, um, other than having that title match at uh, WrestleMania and performing at WrestleMania, all in one night, my checkoff list, dog. I check them off as they get thrown at me. What's your you know? what's your what's your biggest WrestleMania spot so far? You haven't have you had know. a have you had a single? I haven't. Match? I haven't. I've never had a single WrestleMania match. So that's 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 still that's a nice that's a nice and reasonable item to have on your list to check off, bro. That's not bad, right? No, that should happen like that. That should happen. And and there have been multiple times where I have thought and friends of mine have thought, we're like, yo, you could reasonably have our truth in a title situation here. And if it were to happen, it would be, I mean. People would go insane. People would go insane. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? And it's interesting, right? Because, like, like listen, you can't be just like a fanboy about it you got to be realistic in the sense that like the character the character is what the character is so right it's not going to be you get roman reigns one-on-one and you just take roman reigns in the middle okay i understand that but there could be the right moment for it you know with a heel champion and whatever you get a briefcase and you're moving around with the briefcase like there is a way that it would be like the roof blown off and then just yeah. the <laughs> it could happen. <laughs> the roof would definitely get blown off, bro. You have the number. You're the number one merch guy right now. You're the number one merch guy in the company. Yeah, I mean, I love that. Crazy. It's and I, I we love had a little, We had a little discussion on the show this week where I was asking the question. I love the truth, Judgment Day stuff, but at mm-hmm. the same time, does the Judgment Day also need to have? 
another more serious thing that's going on with them. You know what I mean? Or like Rhea kind of now it looks like she's gonna have her thing with Becky, but we were just, you know, nerding out the way we do, questioning why everyone's right. doing what. And someone came at me on, on Twitter and they were like, yo, man, you talking about the judgment day? Judgment Day is number one in merch. And they sent me the list. I said, all due respect, yes, but our truth is number one with the merch right now. That is you listen, this this moment is hot because it's of perfect timing, right? Judgment Day was on fire. You came back. Right. You you would add the funny to them, but make no mistake, those one and two shirts. Those were already the the, the re original Judgment Day shirt had been out. Already, been yes. Out. But when yes. you added the R truth, yo, you know, I almost texted you the the original the first time you did the shirt, did you actually write your name on a on a piece of tape? Yeah, yeah. Uh oh. they told me that uh J D had did it. Um uh, like uh, yeah, J D did. It. I think Ken Dome had said, uh, hey man, you should uh are you gonna write your name on there? I said, Why? He said, Well, J D had done it a while back and blah blah. I said, well, if he did, I'm going to do it. And so I did it, and it was just the next day on uh, social media, I saw someone uh, say, um, oh, I have to have that shirt. I'm like, I just put tape on there and wrote my name on it. And it just went haywire. I was, I was going to, I said to my wife, I was like, should I text Truth right now and see if I can get him to keep, to, to send me that shirt? I was like, Cause are you serious? I was like, cause that one's history. Cause I, I knew in that moment that was gonna be the thing. I knew the second I saw it, that's gonna be the thing. Wow. Did you keep it? Did you keep the shirt with the tape on it? The one I made, I still got it. Yes, I just, yeah, still the original one is there. Please hold on to that. And if you wanna <laughs> give it to me on a birthday, you know what I mean? Give it to me on a birthday, okay? Gotcha, P. Gotcha. Did you, did you um, at any point when you were dealing with the quad thing, by the way, did you did you reach out to Vince, who famously had, you know, blew out his quads back in the day? Uh, I, I uh, text Vince a couple of times. Um, but, man, I was going through that slump. Man. I didn't want to really talk to nobody, Peter. I, um, Why is that? Why when people go through uh, what you don't you don't feel the need? They don't want to connect with other people when you're going through that. You, you're more likely to just disappear. Yeah, I don't want to. Uh, if I can't bring you no no happiness or nothing positive or, or no, nothing inspiring or energetic, or if I can't bring that oomph to you, I don't want to take the 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 wind away. I don't want to take the, I don't want to take nothing for you to worry about me. For you to like, I don't want to take that that. You know what I'm saying? I just rather go through it myself. Well, I mean, yeah, we've talked about this before. You you that is sort of your mo is bringing positive to. What I love about you, Ron, is that it's not that you. You're not intentionally inspirational. You know what I mean? You're not like mm -hmm. performative about being joyful. You're just joyful and it's contagious and rare. And it's in every room that I've ever seen you in. You know what I mean? And right. the, lock, the locker room is a better place when you're there. I mean that since it is a happier place. Appreciate that, Peter. No, wow. that's, Appreciate that, it, man. that's from my heart. That's, that's anyone would tell you that. Um, before, before I let you go, um, when, when I got the best of you and hit that, when you okie doke me, you know, when I schoolboyed you at the, at the Royal Rumble, we're coming up on, I think the three year, I think it's the three year anniversary already. Is it three years? I think it's coming up on three years. This is, wait, this is going to be January 24. Yeah. It was January 21. This is January. That's three years, bro. Three years. Wow. And, time and, fly. And I do have to say, well, I want to ask you a question about it, but I do have to thank you because, you know, listen, who am I talking to? You're the perfect person to talk to about this. For as silly as the 24-7 championship thing is, it, it's truly one of the great things that I ever did. Like, I, I know it sounds crazy, but like, but maybe not to you because you get it too. Like, it was for, for, for someone who loves it as much as I do, to get to be etched in the books in any way meant a lot to me. So I'm, I'm eternally grateful that you did that with me and for me. It was amazing. And also, in the moment when I first was messing up the pin, did you think I'm going to have to kick out on this motherfucker? <laughs> no, because when I told you that, <clears throat> for anybody that's watching or listening to this, I went to pin, I said, I said, bro, 
if it looks very shitty, I said, I'm going to kick out of it. I said, we're <laughs> no, not going to do this on TV. It was the most serious thing you've ever said to me. Because when we were practicing, <laughs> when I was trying to do it, I wasn't doing it great. And you were like, yo, if you, right. if you fuck this up, I'm kicking out. Yeah. <laughs> and if you saw the look on his face, like, I can't give you the look, but in Peter Rosenberg's mind was, dude, this is my only fucking shot at this. <laughs> this is my This is my moment. I'm going to pin you down when I get that chance. <laughs> oh, he forgot everything else. The main thing he wanted to do was make sure Truth was pin pin down. You well, was be- not letting me get up at all, bro. You was you put everything you had into that pin. <laughs> and, if, and if you remember, because if you if you ever go back and watch it, the actual beginning of the bit of the thing, I, I, you're right, I forgot to talk. You were like, yes. right? And I was like, oh, right. I was so yeah, nervous. Yeah, you were now. just on that, and that it really changed the way I thought about wrestling. I thought I knew everything there was to know, and then I was like, "Oh, when you're in the moment and you have one time to do something, it just gave me a whole new respect for for the." I thought I respected the craft as much as I possibly could, mm-hmm. and then I was like, "Oh no, I re- it's on a whole new level, man." Um, I I appreciate you greatly for that and for everything that you bring to the business, and you know, listen, man, go out and win the Royal Rumble. And call your shot at WrestleMania. You know what I mean? Yeah, bro. It was all about judgment day, man. If I get we all get on the same page, man, and everybody get behind me, man. We're gonna have a great night at Royal Rumble. So you're not even thinking about this on a personal tip. For you, this is about the judgment day as a whole. As a, as a whole, man. We brother, my brothers and sisters, man. We're a team. All right, man. I I wish Miz you was... too. Yeah, and the Miz too. That's true. Yeah. And and all the Mysterios. <clears throat> all of them, both of them. Yeah, man. It's a lot of Mysterios there. Uh, True, I appreciate you, man. I'll see you in Tampa. Appreciate you. Thanks, man.